Hello, everybody, and welcome again to the Entrepreneur Power Hour. Today, we are going to discuss being too analytical, thinking about stuff too much, but never executing. It's a problem I think we've all run into. Today, we have Chris, Dada, and Doug to discuss this with us. So, does anybody want to start, have a funny story about maybe when they were stuck in a time where they couldn't make a decision because they were weighing too many options? Somebody, go ahead. <laughs> I guess I, I'm kind of in that position right now. I've got uh, working, working. My wife and I are both working jobs, and we've got offers for other ones, and just trying to juggle things around, figure out which ones we want to take that allow us to keep doing the stuff we're doing on the side. So you can certainly get caught up in thinking, overthinking every little step of the way. Yeah. I agree. I think it's important to uh, <clears throat> to allow yourself to the room to explore and not always worry about everything, getting everything done in such a such a you know short time period. Um, there's been a lot of times where I've just not done things because I've been too analytical about it, <laughs> and it it really doesn't uh, help you progress. Sometimes you got to just follow your heart, and I think that's the most important thing. Is is listening to your heart and doing what you feel is right. Now, there may be some consequences, but I think in the end it just furthers you and furthers your cause. So what do you think, Dada? <laughs> yes, I agree. Um, you know, I was, um, I had uh, been, like all of us, I suppose, um, um, convinced that uh, by the time I left school, in order to you know, um, to to have a good life, a uh, successful life, you know, all those kind of, um, you know, um, words that they use to kind of portray the kind of life that you're supposed to have. Um, I need to get a good job. I need to have, a, you know, a, a, a family, a good job, a good career and everything like that. So I kind of was, um, you know, conditioned into believing that I'll, you know, I'll go to university and, um, so I went to university, I studied medicine for five years, over five years in the end, and um, you know, realized um, increasingly so as time went on that it wasn't for me, and um, then had to um, you know, make a decision, what am I going to do? And I just decided to, um, you know, as you say, follow, follow my heart, and uh, you know, uh, I dropped out. And that was the best decision I think I <laughs> one of yeah. the best decisions I ever made. You know? Right on. So and, and you know, especially my parents, but other other people also were telling me, you know, what are you doing? You know, you've just wasted five years of your life. Hmm. Um, but you know, in, in my way of thinking, I just saved the rest of my life. Yep. Um, so I think it is important to, um, of course, take on board what other people tell you and what we've been conditioned to think and believe and all that kind of stuff. But um, put it through your own your own filter, and um, you know, and yeah. take from it what you need, and and uh, and use your heart to make a decision of, about what's right for you. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah, profound sure. insight. Actually, I was watching your. Uh, I've been, like I said, watching your TED talk a lot, Donna. And one thing I really like is a lot of people postulate that when you think, that constitutes existence. And then you actually said in your philosophy. When I stop thinking, I really am. Uh, mm. well, that was a, I mean, that's that, 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 actually a good realization. Yeah, that's a bit. Uh, it's a bit of a kind of a, a you know a trite way of saying it. Um, it's not exactly like, like that, of course, because we can't really stop thinking as long as we, you know, as long as our minds are operating in within within our bodies. We've got to think. Um, but the the philosophy behind that is that um, our essential existence is not what our minds tell us every day it is. You know, according to the yogic philosophy, we've we've evolved and we've been conditioned to to believe certain things and to and to think and 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 in order to deal with the world and. To, to survive in the world and to exist in the world. Um, but 
but the, the reality, according to Yogi, somebody needs to mute their speakers or their microphone. I don't know if that's Kareem. That's Doug. Okay, continue, Dada. Sorry, we were just getting feedback. Yeah, yeah. I noticed. Um, I was hearing myself getting echoed back at me. Uh, um, so yeah, the reality is that according to yoga philosophy, that um, um, the essential reality is beyond the mind, deeper than the mind, um, and that uh, our our waking existence um, is uh, is is not really. I mean, you know, okay, it's 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 a reality. What we experience day to day is a reality, but it's not the ultimate reality. And uh, and because we're all searching for, um, you know, perfect peace and contentment, happiness, whatever you want to call it, we call it bliss, infinite happiness in yoga. Um, you know, according to the yoga philosophy, we can only satisfy our deepest desire, that desire for the infinite, um, by looking deeper than the mind, beyond the mind, beyond our normal, you know, everyday thought processes. So that's basically the, the, um, the philosophy behind uh, yoga and meditation. Wow. I, I do meditation a little bit, but for me, the most profound experiences are I play uh, guitar, right? So when I'm doing a sh when I'm in a show and there's maybe 50 to 100 people the last show something just took over me and I can't describe it in words it was just a feeling I wasn't thinking about ooh I'm going to do this motion and then I'm going to play this chord because I've been doing it for a while I just felt the crowd and you feel that energy it's so hard to describe cuz the English language is limited, but then you just, if anybody here is a musician, and I believe Chris is as well, you just, when you're playing music, you just feel kind of the thing when you're playing. You just get in the moment. You're not sitting there and like, oh, I have to play this note. Did I miss this note? What do people think if I do something goofy? Because I was jumping on stage was jumping around, people were looking at me like I'm some crazy person, I'm hopping on one leg, and there's even a basketball hoop, and I was thinking, ooh, should I run up and try and catch that, but the drum set was there, <laughs> and I didn't want to get impaled by like the drummer playing and then hurt myself, but you just get that feeling in your gut. So I, think they, I think they call that being in the zone. And then a lot of people say crazy. Something's wrong with your connection, Kareem. Do you want to say, Chris? Yeah, well, we did. I didn't hear half of what you just said because your internet keeps freezing or something. Um, yeah, I mean, when you're in the zone, you're doing something you really love. You're playing music. You're doing martial arts. You're doing something you really, really like to do. I think that all time and space kind of just freezes, at least that's how I feel when I'm really into something and I'm doing something. It's almost like time doesn't exist because I've had the subjective experience where if I'm really doing something awesome that I'm totally into, time just goes, 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 right? But when you're doing something you really hate doing or you know it's tedious, time seems to stop altogether. So I think the way we experience the passing of salient events is is all subjective to the emotional experience behind the event, and uh, that's why the, the, today shows about putting that analytical side apart, uh, get it out of there, and just take some time to explore yourself and explore the options that you have available to you to further your your career in in, uh, in whatever you choose to do as an entrepreneur. I think it's very important to allow yourself to make those mistakes, allow yourself to have fun and grow and, and goof off once in a while. You can't always be serious about this all the time. Um, and, and you got to engage your audience and you got to engage people and uh, you know it's uh, it's pretty incredible what you can accomplish when you uh, when you really love what you're doing because then it becomes effortless. So anybody else have anything they want to add? Yeah, I think uh, time is actually um, 
you know, they're finding out now that, that time is actually a function of the mind. And um, so, so basically the more you think, the more time is going to be a significant factor. Um, so, you know, I, th I suppose that's what's behind the thing, you know, time flies when you're having fun. When you're having fun, you're getting into the zone, you're getting out of your head, you're getting, you, you know, you're transcending yourself um, and you're getting into a more kind of intuitional kind of way of being rather than an intellectual way of being. And, um, and time becomes irrelevant. So, uh, yeah. What do you think, Doug? Experience? Oh. Um, well, I'm, I'm the analytical guy, so... <laughs> uh, no, yeah. We're trying yeah, to get trying you to, get to put you that aside. aside. Um, yeah, I, I like looking at things from all sides. Uh, I do spend a lot of time in my head. Uh, but, at the same token, um, you know, there's times when I can really get in that zone and focus. And usually that's when you get the most done, when you're not bouncing around a million different things. Uh, but uh, some of the some of the best creativity is when you just let your mind wander as well. So sometimes you come up with ideas uh, that you wouldn't normally have. I agree. I agree. And some sometimes you know day <laughs> daydreaming has really brought me some of the best inspiration I've ever had. Um, then of course I go back to analytical and I try to search out all the different ways that that idea comes about. So <laughs> yeah. it's kind of a circle. <laughs> it, is. it is. Yeah. Can you mute your microphone again, uh, Doug? Please. Oh, hello, Candice. We have a new guest on the panel. How are you? Good. I see Candice. Somebody joined us. Yes. Hi. I'm Vladimir. She actually. Um, or is that my work? Uh, she, oh, she's, cool. She's, well, it's nice to meet you. Good. So I, I thought I'd uh, invite her to let her see what we're doing, but uh, I wanted to throw a quick story because uh, for those of you who may not like, know me, I, I do public speaking as kind of my hobby, kind of a way to eventually, that's going to be my entrepreneurial effect on this world. But when I first started as a kid, I actually pulled my shirt over my head like this when I was like five. So I was super afraid of crowds. And one thing I want to teach people as a speech coach is the problem that happens is you start looking at all the external and you start looking at all the things that are out there, all the thoughts you have about being scared. People will judge me. There's too many people in the crowd. What if I say the wrong thing? What if I run out of things to say? And when you start erasing that from your head, you actually make some amazing speeches. Because my mind's kind of empty now. I'm just doing free-flowing consciousness of voice. But it actually comes better than if I'd have note cards and I'd be looking. So when it comes to analyzing and looking at stuff constantly, it actually does a detriment because you think so much about all that could go wrong versus all that could go right. And if you just kind of be in the moment, you can give an awesome speech. That's really one of the fundamentals of just being an awesome public speaker. But I think I, I gave you that uh, video, Chris, on Elliot Hulse, and he's yes. all about like the mind and the body. So could you like enunciate, explain to me like what following your heart means and not being so analytical? Let's like spice it up. Yeah, I mean... I think it, uh, that if people will just stop worrying about criticism and just follow their heart and do whatever the heart tells them to do, that it, life would be so much easier for people. And, uh, you know, having fun doing what you do is success because when you're following your heart and your intuition, that's the universe's way of communicating with you. It's saying, hey, do this. It's pushing you to do what you want to do and I think that's the connection we all have with the divine guiding uh, energy of the universe is we when you know something's right you just know it's right and so many people go against their heart they go against their intuition they go against their instinct and what they want to do and they never find happiness they never find success because they're busy making somebody else successful and I think that 
as entrepreneurs, we got to step it up and we got to inspire people to get off the treadmill. I mean, that's, that's why I'm here and uh, that's what I want to continue to do is help people find that strength to push themselves and to do whatever's in their heart to do. And I think that, that is probably the most important element of of succeeding is uh, following what's inside of you and not worrying about being criticized. So. Anybody else want to add some stuff? Regarding, uh, yeah, I agree. Regarding what Kareem was saying before, that uh, you know, if you're focusing or if you're worried on the result, um, you're not going to have such a good result because you're not actually focusing on the here and now, the you know, the the the, the way to accomplishing the result. So you know, this is this also kind of like um, it touches on another yogic concept, which is you know, as you think, so you become. You know, whatever you're you know, when when you're focusing on something, you're um, you know you're accomplishing that thing a lot better than if you're focusing, um, you know, on on the result that you want to attain by doing that. So it's best to you know as much as possible, you know, focus on what you're doing and not worry about um, you know the result of it, and the result will come automatically and a lot you know a lot better than if you were worried or focused on the result rather than what you're doing to accomplish it. Cool. Yep. cool. I know one thing he says also in that video is a lot of people will make you compare like, ooh, this guy has this or people have material possessions when really, to me, that's kind of an illusion. We get caught up in like, that guy has a bigger car, a bigger house, he says. And then people will say that, you know, we need to compare who has this, who has that, put all the numbers in front of you. When the numbers really don't matter, what matters is that maybe you, you just listen to your body. What's your body telling you? Because that's really all you have at the end of the day is your feelings. So what if your body just tells you, I want to go for a walk. I want to go to a foreign country. I want to pick off and just go. He uses the example of just painting, like I just want to paint or I just want to play the guitar. We're discouraged from that. Because a lot of people will go and say, well, what about money? What about insurance? Are you going to make it? Do you have a degree? Blah, blah, blah. And I fell into this trap of, oh, I need to get a degree and go through the motions. And I'm not saying I regret that, but I want to do something to change the way I'm focusing. So when it comes to really feeling what's in here, sometimes, and I'm not saying, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm not encouraging bad irrational decisions to hurt someone. Like he says, it's okay to feel hate or love as long as you don't act on it in a bad way. To, but as long as you act out what you're feeling in here, I think it's kind of cool to make a crazy irrational decision once in a while. Maybe go on yeah. a trip. Go yeah. uh, hiking. Go bear riding. Uh, bear riding, huh? Go, go eat sushi. <laughs> Some people are scared of that. I don't Can know we why. wrestle some bears and get all clawed up and decapitated? <laughs> and, you know, go bear wrestling? That would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? And see if you could survive. <laughs> make, sure that, make sure it's not hungry when you're attacking it there, Kareem, when you're trying to ride them or, you know. I said riding it, not attacking. No, but just do. I think the problem is we're just so contained and I have to, I have to. I mean, granted, I want to get in this hangout. I feel good about it. So yeah. it's not a have to, but no. I have to go to work. I have to get up and, and say, I have to go to school. It all becomes like obligatory stuff that we just force on ourselves. Yeah. And then we tell ourselves, oh, this is the path. I, I you know, I got to suffer a whole bunch to get to where I'm at. And I'm not saying it's all rainbows and ponies, but... There has to be a fundamental thing where you look inside yourself and see, do I really enjoy what I'm doing? Is there any pleasure? Because I know being in a cubicle, it's very hard to work at optimal efficiency because even though I like my job, I feel I could be out making awesome speeches and playing awesome music and, of course, hanging with you guys. But uh, I want to get maybe your perspective on that, somebody else. 
Yeah, I was uh, I was listening to that, and probably the first thing that stood out to me about it was uh, talking about how people ex are expected to do this or to do that, uh, you know, as a norm. But um, I, I don't look at it that way so much. I mean, I know that I know, you know, people are raised to get a job, get an education, all that stuff. But I think, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're any kind of an individualist at all, which I'm guessing most of us are because we're entrepreneurs, um, you, you learn pretty early on not not really to worry about what other what other people are doing for the norm. I mean, it's the whole idea of entrepreneurship is stepping outside of the norm, isn't it? Chasing yep, yep. your dreams, going after your dreams, going, you know, taking uh, taking that step outside the, the normal pathways to to achieve more, to enjoy more, to, you know, just to get away from the norm, if anything. Um, now, there, now, of course, at the same token, there's a certain amount of responsibility, uh, probably even more so as an entrepreneur, because the decisions you have to make uh, are your responsibility rather than somebody else's. Yep. yep. So um, you know, following, being able to balance that, the dreams and the risk and the you know the day-to-day -day workings of everything you have to do to keep everything functioning smoothly, um, and along with the you you know the free thought and the and the thinking thinking and. Outside the box ways to uh, to accomplish what you want to accomplish. So it's really, uh, I think almost every entrepreneur is uh, the guy that's up there spinning the plates and trying to keep everything moving. Uh, yeah. um, and at the same token, try to keep focused enough to get anything done. So it's a it's a real hodgepodge of stuff to, that has to be thrown together and managed. And you know. One of the reasons that that this particular program is is so helpful is because nobody can manage all those things you know efficiently by themselves. I mean, uh, very few people, I should say. I mean, um, there's always strengths and weaknesses that we all have, and um, you know. Whereas I said myself, I'm not I'm not necessarily the most creative guy because I'm I'm always I may think of a lot of different things, but Following through on them, you know, isn't follow through isn't one of my strongest suits. Um, you know, somebody said to, you called me an idea man before this. <laughs> I make them up with the ideas, but then I'm on to the next one, you know, and let somebody else handle the details of it. Um, but I've learned that about myself. So if there's something that I need help with to get something accomplished, then I'll go to somebody I know that has those skills, and that frees me up to do what I do better, you know. Um, and that's a big part of entrepreneurship is learning how to delegate that out so that you're not spinning your wheels. Yep. Now I'll let somebody else take it and I'll mute this out again. That's cool. What? I didn't say anything. <laughs> oh, I thought you were like, come on, Chris, talk. I'm like, man, you go ahead. I'm still thinking about what I want to say. I can give you I can actually give you something to say. Um you said you were asking and, and then a lot of people go, This is crazy. You said you were asking to like meet somebody from another country, from an Asian country. Now a lot of people, you you had to let your analytical side go because a lot of people will say, well, she's not in the same country, blah, blah, blah. Oh, How's yeah, it going to work? My wife, right, yeah. Um, well, I think that the girl I'm with now, the woman I'm with now, um, is definitely the one that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with because I've been through many bad, bad relationships with Caucasian women from my own city and... Uh, just not really into them anymore, you know. Um, so I met a beautiful woman from the Philippines who is, in my opinion, the hottest woman that exists. Um, and she's very cool, very good personality. She's supportive. She's appreciative. And that's what I was asking the universe for. Um, and we are making it work. We've been together nine months today. So we're making it work. She's got a plan. She's saving money. I'm saving money. She's going to come over here and uh, and live here. So uh, 
We just got to get her all the proper documents filed and everything like that. But we talk every day, um, and we really love each other. So uh, it's possible to find love anywhere, in any time, and in any country. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, uh, because we're all unlimited. Energy is unlimited. So you know, I don't think love's strictly limited to a physical connect to a physical thing. And I think that it's very important uh, that we know that the that love can can really be a, um, something you can feel no matter where you are. So that's a a perfect example of following your heart and following your your instinct. So, um, and I I just have no interest in you know women from my country anymore. No interest. So, um, yeah, that that's. Main- Go ahead, sorry. No, but the main point is a lot of people that are quote-unquote, I, I don't want to be mean here, a lot of the normal approach would be uh, go to a certain venue like a nightclub or a bar and then start a conversation. At least that's what the more like the rational person would say to do. Uh, but in the case of following your heart, letting go of your analytical side, you just decided... I want a specific person from a specific country. How are you doing, Carl? And I, I'm going to throw out the energy, or what Abraham Hicks calls being in the vortex, which I'm not going to go too matrix on us here, but it's getting in that vibrational field where you can say, regardless of all the evidence saying no, you can do it. And it's funny because I was watching a network marketing video about this guy who was saying, yeah, most people fail in network marketing, but fail, failures because when you give up, because people look at the statistics, one out of two fail, three out of four fail, whatever it is, instead of realizing that performance and giving it all you have, even when things aren't working, sometimes in the, the face of adversity, when the numbers are against you, makes it work because performance outweighs all the bad statistics in the world. Otherwise, Otherwise people people would uh, be afraid to get married or do anything. I wanted to comment comment on that for just a second. Oh, go ahead. ahead. You said, uh, and I think I've seen that same multi-level marketing video you're talking about, and and you're saying that, um, you know, most people think network marketing fails because three out of four people fail or whatever. But you got to realize that in in regular you know brick and mortar businesses, nine out of ten of them fail first year every time. Um, so network marketing actually has a really good record compared to that. Um, it's just that it's because people just hear what's out there and uh, and the, the people that have failed. Are the first ones to say, "Oh, yeah, that didn't work. That didn't work out for me." Well, the same people are telling you if they fail in their business, they don't usually tell you they fail in a regular business because it's more embarrassing to them than, you know, would be my my thought. You know, oh yeah, I opened up a jewelry store and I lost it in a year. Not something you're going to tell all your friends, but well, I got yeah, involved with that network marketing thing and that didn't work out like they promised. Yeah, you know, that's not nothing to do with the network marketing part of it. Is they probably didn't do the work, the work necessary to make it work, um, and uh, that's unfortunate. But it's it's the way people are. I mean, you know, it ta- it takes a certain amount of drive and and dedication and you know belief for one, just to uh, to be able to make something like that work. And uh, I, I bet you every one of us here, or at least I know you guys, uh, Kareem and Chris, can vouch for this, that uh, there's uh, network marketing, like anything else, has a lot of failure while you're getting to success. Right? I mean, it doesn't mean that you're going to fail completely. It's just there's some setbacks, and there's times when it doesn't all go as, as you hope and, hope and plan that it will. Um, or as fast, especially, as, as you hope and plan that it will, but it still doesn't mean that it's failed. It's just the steps along the way to success. I love that. I love what you just said. Uh, you just, uh, just, uh, you're just making me feel better, thanks. <laughs> no, but no. honestly, uh, I'm getting an echo a little bit. He muted. Okay, honestly, um, the problem, 
I think people have is they have a set plan of how they want things to work out. Okay, I'm going to work for five to ten months, get this in my downline, blah, 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 blah. And I actually wouldn't like life. I used to complain because life didn't go my way. Now I'm happy it does. And people are like, what? And it's for the fact that I want things to... Uh, sometimes life's going to throw you a curveball and then all your analytical plans go down the drain. And I wouldn't have that any other way because if I knew everything that was going to happen in my life, someone just said, Kareem, first this is going to happen, then you're going to meet this person, then you'll do this and this and this, and here's how you'll die. I, I wouldn't like that. Even, actually, I wouldn't like to go to a fortune teller and have them be right. I want to see the crazy things for myself. I want to jump into a world where I can't analyze it, be the curveball, and then deal with them. And that's the way I view my businesses. Uh, I had no idea last week the hangout was like breaking and I'm getting mad and Chris probably was drinking a beer uh, or trying to, you know, chill about it. And it, it's kind of funny because it, it threw a curveball and you learn how to deal with it. And then you can't sit there and analyze what's going to happen. You have to act because the worst thing you can do is not act. Even if you make a mistake, you'll learn from it. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Dada or Chris or somebody else? I think I think Chris has gone somewhere. Oh, I'm no. right here. Oh, okay. No. Sorry. Right. I went to get some sunflower seeds. Oh, that's a good thing to get. It is. They're delicious. Go ahead, Dada. I'll shut up. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think the mystery of life is um, is uh, one of the things that makes life beautiful. You know, you wouldn't want everything to be all preset and kind of predetermined, or you know, we'll know what's going to happen. Um, you know, uh, in the in the yogic uh, in the yogic philosophy, there's actually the um, you know the possibility of of uh, of seeing into the future. Um, you know, it it exists as an actual reality. There have been people that uh, that um, can see into the future and can know what's going to happen. So you not only know the you can not only know the past and the present, but you can there is actually the capacity to know the future as well. Um, but uh, personally, I I don't think I'd I'd want to because. Uh, you know, as Karim was saying, that there is a, um, it adds a kind of a, you know, that that myst mysterious component to life. It's a beautiful thing, and um, you know, we're all in this um, incredible kind of drama together. And it's like when you're watching a, a film or something. If you know what's going to happen, it's not going to be so um, interesting. It's it's great that we're all kind of like. Especially today, everything's kind of hanging in the air, and there's all these, you know, weird and crazy things that are going on. Um, but uh, I think if we see it all as part of a drama that we don't know the outcome to yet, um, and we keep everything in perspective, it can be a beautiful thing. It can, you know, make life, uh, you know, one of, one of the things that makes life enjoyable and worth living. That you really feel like you're part of a drama that's kind of playing out, and um, and we still have to. Um, it's uh, continually unfolding, and we still have to find out what the um, what the kind of like the, the conclusion will be. So that's part of yeah. life. Yeah, I agree, Dada. I think certainty. <clears throat> I used to crave certainty all the time. You know, I wanted to be so sure of what was going to happen. I wanted to be. I wanted to know, like, is everything going to work out? Is everything going to, you know, turn out for me? And I think. <clears throat> that over time, I just decided, you know, well, as long as I work hard for it and believe in it and believe it, it's going to happen, it'll happen, you know. Um, and we're really entering a new age of of awakening and awareness, at least I hope that's what's, what's going to, when all the smoke clears and people stop fighting and all that other jazz, I hope that people realize that they are the creators of their own life. And uh, you gotta let the universe handle the results. I mean, you tell it what you want. Carl, you need to mute your mic there.
Okay. And I, I think that uh, we have to make sure that we keep that part of us alive um, because society tries to weigh us down so much, right? It tries to tell us who we can be, where we can go, what we can spend our money on, what we should spend our money on. Um, yeah. It even tries to tell us who to love. Right. You know, it even tries to tell us that we're not supposed to love another man or a woman's not supposed to love another woman, and that that's bullshit. Um, I don't think anybody has any right to designate who someone can love and, and who someone can't. That's nobody's business but the people that are involved in that in that uh, in that life. So, I think that in for me, it's been very very. Uh, I've been on a roller coaster, you know, um, and it's been terrifying at times, but it's also been very enlightening and a lot of fun. So um, that's kind of how I look at life. It's like one big amusement park ride, and there's going to be terrifying parts, and there's going to be some really blissful, joyful parts, and uh, some pretty crazy parts, all kind of put into this paradigm that we're experiencing right now. So. Um, I, I've kept my dream alive, and I'm still here, and I'm still going. So, um, it is possible. Thank you. Absolutely, that was awesome. Yeah. Hey, Carl. Actually, uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, if it would be okay, just uh, I'd like to hear about like maybe a time or a situation where maybe you had too many numbers or figures, too much analytical thoughts going, and it was tough to make a decision. And maybe what you did to overcome that. And this is our friend uh, Carl Davis, everybody. Can you can you hear me, Carl? Hello. Uh, he's still muted. He, he's yeah. Mic. I'm not sure. I guess he's having some uh, tech issues. Uh, feel free to to jump in, Carl. It's an open discussion uh, whenever you want. But uh, yeah, let. An interesting thing for me, and I'll give a little bit of my personal life, is in high, in, I'd say like in junior high when I was a teen, I was really afraid to talk to women. When I, when I, when, and it was kind of funny because people would be like, she's over there, go talk to her. I'd go hide. I'd run away at uh, junior high dances. Now keep in mind I'm 13, 14, uh, maybe even 12 at that point. And we're just starting to... Uh, talk with the opposite sex or, or be friends with the opposite sex. And one way I got over that was to stop thinking so much about, ooh, she's going to throw water in my face, she's going to slap me, she's going to yell at me, she's going to call me a name, which none has ever happened to this day. And I would just go up and be goofy. Like, I had this goofy saying, like, hello, body. And I would just go up to... Um, up to women or my friends and just jump there and be goofy as possible. The first dumb thing I could say into my head, I, I just set it out and set out. And actually, that's what boosted my confidence in now being able to uh, successfully not only talk to women but talk to anybody who I find intimidating. So it's 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 pretty cool that I don't have this thought in my head of ooh, what did I say? Is that bad? Was that good? Was that offensive? No, this is just Kareem. I'm being off and I'm not going to analyze every single thing I say. And I've been, I'm not going to say any names. I've been on programs and I've been in certain uh, situations. And I know Chris has too, where it was very filtered. You kind of had to watch what you say because then you'd be, like, you'd be called out. And I, I never liked that. I don't want somebody sitting there saying, ooh, Kareem said this or Kareem's into this type of art or whatever. I want to be unabashedly able to express myself, obviously in a, in a respectful way, but unabashedly express myself without trying to think about am I offending somebody or thinking what am I going to say next because then I'll become a robot. Uh, someone add to that perspective? I think uh, the society that we're living in right now, especially the Western society, um, which is you know like exemplified by you know the U.S. or where I, where I'm based, also in Australia, it's also very much like this. But um, you know we're 
we're kind of overwhelmed with the expectations of you know our our parents our our teachers our elders the 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 whole society the whole kind of you know um, the matrix that's been imposed on us and and I that obviously that takes the spontaneity out of life um, you know everything's become when it whenever anything is you know over regulated it becomes boring and sterile and you lose the enjoyment of life so I think um, you know whenever you I, obviously there's got to be a balance between comfort and challenge you know you don't want a life which is too challenging of course because that that would be overly stressful but on the other hand you don't want a life which is too comfortable because to really experience the beautiful aspects of life you need to go out of your comfort zone so I think um, part of life is keeping a balance between okay you know meeting your physical and psychic needs you know a certain amount of comfort a certain amount of stability but not an over amount of comfort and stability not over regulation of life um, because then then life becomes sterile and meaningless um, I think we have to have a certain amount of spontaneity and a certain amount of mystery to life um, in which we can you know step out of our comfort zones and experience you know new things experience the beauty of the, the mystery of life which we would otherwise not experience if you know we were too you know like we we're, we're encouraged or even forced in many ways to be too over regulated in our lives especially you know in, in our in our current day society I, I actually I actually agree with you on that uh, there there does need to be a challenge um, between I mean there has to be a, a balance between challenging you know you have to be challenged and experience the the struggles of life I suppose you call it um, because you can't grow if everything's so simple uh, I, uh, on the other side of that though uh, I do believe well I, I completely believe in, in freedoms and and you know reach being able to expand and reach out and experience new things I think I think one of the problems we're facing especially in Western society today is we're facing a, a, a move away from values um, in, in reaching for those for that freedom of expression and stuff I mean uh, you know, I'm I'm all for everybody being as as individual and as free as they want to be, but there are certain certain sets of values and principles that once you step out of that, then you're into chaos, and that's uh, I think uh, I think we're heading that way really quickly, um, to the detriment of I mean to our detriment, not to our success, um, and uh, and again it's balance. You know, you have to find a balance. Um, between, you know, I guess political correctness is one of the things that really annoys me today. Um, we're we're so politically correct now that literally, you you know, it's 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 considered bad to stand up for a value anymore. You know, um, and and there are certain values that you shouldn't back down from. I mean, that's just the way the way it is. Uh, I'm not going to speak to any specific issue, but um, you know, uh, if you if you stop speaking out for your principles to allow somebody to do something that goes against them because they didn't because you think or because it's politically correct, I think that's a, a detriment as well. Yeah, I fully yeah, totally agree with you. Um, go go ahead, Paul. Can you all hear me? I can hear you. Can you all hear yeah, me? tell me about okay. yes. Yeah. Um, getting back to you, Kareem, on that, yeah, I've had a lot of people throughout my life that have put the judgment on me, like, they think they're superior, or this, that, and the other, you know, and, and they're not, but they think that they're better because they make more, or walk better, or function better, or, you know, all the way through my life, I've had nothing but, you know, little judgments, but you know what, overcoming them, 
overcoming them was the hardest thing of all. But it's just like a song that was done. I know you're not all in the country, but um, one song when you're going through hell, you just keep on going. Just keep on going. Keep on keeping on. And that persistence wins the race. And oftentimes people lose their focus on a persistence. So after a while, they lose focus on where they're going, where they're ever going to go, because they, they've they listened to some false pretense that has been scattered throughout the world about network marketing, for instance. You know, that is not where you put the judgment. It's a relationship. It's like any business that you do. You do I mean, the, even the big people in Walmarts and all those big stores, they had to have a relationship to start someplace, you know, and my relationship with my relatives and such, I don't have. I, I mean, we're friends, we see each other, we come and go once in a while, but, you know, basically, my family is the people that I meet here. This is my family. You know, people that want to listen to what I have to say instead of saying, oh, I'm going to cut you off like I didn't hear you. Well, that's not life. That's non-life. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much for that. Because the power of the internet and the power of this hangout is to really give all entrepreneurs a voice. So, let's say I'm, a, you know, we're in network marketing. Uh, we might be in different companies. Uh, Dada might be, you know, doing something on the spiritual side. We get a graphic designer or a website designer. We can all express our own individual experiences. And when someone sees this, they're gonna stop comparing. Cause I, I showed this video to Chris a couple days ago. Maybe it was a week ago. There's a lot of people, and it's by a guy named Elliot Holtz. He's like strength training dude. And a lot of people get in this trap of comparison, like, ooh, that guy has a bigger car, that guy has a bigger house, that guy has a more beautiful wife, whatever the case is. But you don't know fundamentally if that person's really happy or if that person's really following their heart. They could just have those things because mommy and daddy told them, work hard, work hard, get these things, these are the social standards you have to follow. And I'm starting it's to break boring. away from that and say that that makes no sense. Stop comparing. Do you? What do you want? Do, do you want a small house, a big house? Do you want a house? Do you want a fast car? I don't. I used to think I did because my friend said, ooh, get a Dodge Viper or a Lambo. That makes you cool. And really, I'm thinking that's a waste of time and money. I'd rather drive a yep. Honda, even if I become yep. a billionaire. And actually, the, the problem we fall into is we're so busy looking at what others have and analyzing that we start to think, oh, this is what I need to do, instead of looking to what we feel. Like, do you, maybe you just want to be a hiker your whole and just travel the world. So don't let anyone, Carl, compare this to you and then say, oh, I'm better because I have this, this, and this. Because they might have that, but they might have a sickness. I used to have managers that would analyze all the time, be very good at their job, and I find out they're alcoholics. I mean, make, yeah, they're making a hundred thousand. I'm making thirty thousand, maybe, but I have my health at the end of the day, and I'll tell you what, it probably adds up to the same. So I know I've talked a lot. So jump in, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think it really matters what you have materialistically because that doesn't mean anything. You know. Um, I think it's very important that our viewers know that we're not materialistic people, we're not judgmental people, we're not, you know, you can come from any walk of life and be on our show with us and and grow with us and offer insight and, and everything everybody says is, is valuable here. So um, that's why me and Kareem started this show because we were sick of being in the box we were in before and we said... F that, we're out of here, and uh, we're all we're better for it. And we're getting a lot further than we did in the program we were involved with. So 
Uh, we use some critical thinking skills, and I think that's very important to never lose that that's those critical thinking skills and being able to recognize your environment and recognize any type of situation you find yourself in that if it doesn't feel right, get the hell out of it because that's your inner voice telling you, this isn't right, time to go, move on. And I think the biggest problem we face in our daily existence is stagnance. You know, we're, we're creatures of habit, right? So we get so comfortable with something. We get so comfortable and we get so so uh, used to something. And our, our minds and bodies love routine. Now, routine's good for sleeping, it's good for eating, and it's good for pretty much that's about it. Okay? You're, if you're a creative being, your mind craves challenge. Your mind create, craves that the creative intellect is stimulated if you're a creative being. Now some people are left-brained, some people are right-brained. I'm proud to say I'm right-brained all the way. Okay, I'm not a, a left-brained analytical type person that I, I, I have creativity flowing out my ass. Okay, And for me I constantly have to be in a creative process or I feel like I'm not doing something I should be doing. My heart says, hey man, you know, keep creating, keep doing this, keep doing this. So when I go on creative spurts, it, it happens in binges, especially with music. Um, and, and this book that me and Kareem are writing together, um, you know, he's already done his part. Now I've got to wait for that inspiration to hit, and then I'm just going to be banging it out like crazy. And I'm gonna, it's all going to come together and be great. And I think that that's the voice people need to listen to, is that urge. You know, when you feel like doing just do it. Don't worry about the result. Do it, because... To, oftentimes we're too worried about being criticized or judged and I think that's bullshit and nobody should have to live like that nobody should have to be told that they're not a, a you know that they're not capable of something because that is just complete hogwash you know you look at the the accomplishments of mankind um, you know we've landed on the moon we've you know done all kinds of amazing things throughout history but we've also done a lot of destructive things with our intelligence so I think people need to become aware of the balance in the universe and follow the balance of the universe and not get too greedy and things like that, and the world will become a better place. So I think the more entrepreneurs we have in the world, the more change we can affect, the more minds we can, we can inspire to change. And I think, for me, that's my biggest goal with this show is, is awareness and helping people become aware of their own potential. Thanks, guys. Anyone want to jump in? This cool. is open. And I was going to say sports is another great example because when you're a goalie like I was in soccer or Golden State, when you're on the free throw line, you don't have time to go, hmm, five, blah, blah, blah. You just you make the shot. The quarterback just shoots. Like, I'm watching soccer now. That's what popped in my head. I'm just like, oh, yeah, it's Jamaica versus Argentina. You just, if you're, I know, Chris, you're into sports, and I don't know if you guys are, but. You watch a sport, those athletes, they're not thinking about it, I, I guarantee on that line. They're just, they might have plans before, like, we'll do this play. But when you get to there and the quarterback's just like, I see a dude. Pew. Hopefully that was a good sound effect. <laughs> one, of the things, one of the things that stood out when Chris was talking there about, um, you know, I, I, think, I think what all of us have, from birth, and I think it's kind of inborn in us, is, uh, is a desire to improve, you know, in, in some way, some form. It doesn't matter whether it's left brain, right brain, doesn't matter whether you're moving fast forward or moving slow forward, uh, you know, none of us want to be taking steps backwards. Uh, and I think that's just part of, part of our nature, you know, whether it's God-given or universe-given, however you want to look at it. Um, our, our nature is to improve and achieve something. Um, be better yet today than we were yesterday. Um, and better tomorrow than we are today. And uh, when, when, when I hear people talk about, you know, somebody looking down on somebody because they have more or they've achieved more, I, you know, I think, I think the person, anybody that, that looks down on somebody because they've done better is, is missing the point. You know, um, if you were fortunate enough to have have reached that point, then uh, 
then you're, the way to get better from there is to help somebody else reach that same point or, or more. Um, and, you know, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, the guy that drives the Mercedes and, and has the yacht, I, I you know, I, I congratulate him, absolutely. If you can, if you can get that um, and you feel good about how you got there, man, more power to you. And, and I, and I, I won't say envy you, but I'd sure like to be in the same position because if, you you know, you reach, you reach that point where you can afford that stuff, then you can do a whole lot for people as well. Um, you know, and, but, but, the, but achievement isn't necessarily just, or success isn't, it isn't all in, in money or a goal, you know, I mean, I, I so admire somebody that can, can give up uh, a six-figure income and go do, uh, you know, go just give it up, walk away, and go build uh, Jesus wells or, or, you know, help build schools in some foreign country just because they just felt called to do it. I mean, to me, that's that's an achievement that uh, I'm not sure that I could do. For, first off, um, you know, give up that, give up the security of of what we're used to here, and and just step out and do that. Uh, so I admire those people as much as I admire the guy that makes a million dollars a year or more. Yep. You know, even yep. even more sometimes. Um, so, you know, uh, I I also admire the the person that just you know. For whatever reason, maybe felt that they didn't treat people as well as they should, and made a conscious decision to say, from here on out, I'm gonna I'm gonna find something kind to say to every person I meet, or or you know I'm gonna find a way to give back something today to help somebody else get get a step up. And I yeah. think those people are as as admirable or more admirable than anybody that that uh, that just make more money or. or or uh, you know, builds a business or something like that. But uh, but I don't take away from those people at all. Those people building businesses are helping other people feed their families. So you you know, um, yeah, you, 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 you can't judge people by what you see up front. Uh, people have to be able to to look inside and and make sure that they're living living the life they want to live. And hopefully, again, trying to improve that life every day, trying to do something a little bit better. A little bit uh, more for the rest of us, I guess, or for the rest of the world. Um, but it, it does bother me a little bit to people that that say envy and people are not good. So, hold on a second. All right, go ahead. I'm going to get off here for a second. Go ahead, Dada. Uh, yeah, I I think um, yeah. I, I'm agreeing with you all. I, I think it's important. Um, I, I just want to talk a little bit um, about pur uh, purpose, sense of purpose, and I I think it's really important for you know like whatever we're doing, you know, um, that we have a real sense of purpose in our lives, because we've been like we've been dumbed down to kind of think, okay, just be comfortable, just be you know, like um, have enough money, have a good job so you can buy this and buy that and eat nice food and all that kind of stuff. But people are dissatisfied because um, in amongst this, um, you know, otherwise seemingly kind of, um, you know, affluent kind of, or, you know, kind of, you know, lifestyle which is giving us um, all that we need on the physical plane, um, we're still unsatisfied because in today's society we we haven't been kind of like that that real sense of purpose a mission in life has not been emphasized so um, I think it's important that um, you know as you were saying Chris you know do what you really love have the freedom to express yourself of course as long as it's not taking anything away from anyone else what in doing so um, and at the same time um, you know as as Doug was saying, mentioned values before and and Carl was talking about persistence um, you know, do what you love, but within a framework which is going to really facilitate a sense of purpose and 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 mission in life. Um, because you know, uh, unless uh, unless you know you're you're totally in the creative kind of flow, um, which um, which a lot of us, including myself, don't have the luxury of being in uh, most of the time. Um, we do need a. We do also need kind of boundaries in order to be able to facilitate 
um, you know what we're tr what we're trying to achieve. So I would I would um, kind of say that in order to really achieve this, a real sense of purpose and, and a real sense of mission, a real kind of feeling that your life is a mission. Your you know I don't mean it in the religious or classical sense. Of, I'm talking about about uh, you know a real feeling of mission in the most general sense of the term. That um, your life has a purpose. Your um, you know. A, a purpose which is higher than the mundane um, kind of you know the just the normal day-to-day -day mundane goals that you're so used to and you, you get bored with um, um, you know for having you know ha for having have have to do every day um, you know if we can have a higher uh, sense of um, um, a purpose in our lives do what we really love but do it within boundaries that are going to Benefit those around us as well as ourselves, and get us to a place, and get in fact get the whole society to a place where we really feel that our lives are worth something. There's there's a there's a high, there's a purpose to our lives. There's a meaning to our lives which is beyond, um, you know, just the the mundane. Um, so that's what I would say at this point. That was brilliant. Yeah, I. That's awesome. Carl's unmuted. You want to add something? Go for it. Well, you know, it's the thing. You know, society puts you in a box unless you decide to escape that box. It's like putting a cat in a box. How long is it going to stay in that box? Probably not very long. It's going to want out. Yeah. And basically, society wants us to think we have to live mundane. We can't have what we want, and if we do, we're foolish because we're trying to reach for that gold ring. You know, you know, people will mock me all the time. Oh, you're foolish for what you're doing. You're going to get ripped off. It's all a scam. You know what? I don't care what they say because in the end of the day, I look myself in the mirror and say, I achieved today. What I didn't achieve yesterday, and I will achieve tomorrow, and that's where you all have to put it. Live now, now. Don't think about what all the world is judging on. That's their world. If they want to sit there and judge people, they can go judge somebody down the street because I really don't want to hear it. You know, and that's where you got to live. You gotta live. I don't care what you think about what I do because what I do is satisfying me. And all my life I lived like I wasn't important. I wasn't important. Everybody else was. Yeah. Starting from birth, mom was more important. Dictator, tell me how to do stuff. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. What makes you think I can't do something? Don't ever put me in that box. Because that box is not a place I'm staying. It's like I've got Indian in me. And it's like putting an Indian in a cage. They're coming out of that cage. And when they do, they're coming out either for good or bad to fight to win. Success is the same way. Fight to win. Never say die. Jump right up. I mean, I'm a handicapped person. I have to pull myself in and out of bed, on and off the toilet. But you know what? It give me that fight to say, never say die. Never say die. And to leave you all with that, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. That's right. Right That's on. That's right. <laughs> and I thank you all for letting me speak my opinion. You know, That's what this show's about, man. You can say whatever the hell you want. You can offend fine. people. I don't care. This uh, this is not a dictatorship. We're here to, to challenge minds as well as inspire. And if you've got something to say that you need to get off your chest, say it. I don't uh, care. That's, that's we're not. Awesome. We're not. We're not. Yeah, we're not, you know, we're not, uh, we're we're not uh, putting people in any type of of uh, restriction here. As long as you don't, no, don't say anything like really, you know. But that's why, I, that's so. why I 
appreciate that because that's where I've been put most of my life. You know, yeah. and mentoring three opened my eyes. It really opened my eyes. You know what I'm saying? I, I always thought I was like my dad was always called a natural born F op. And I was natural born F op, op junior. Well, you know what? If this person is coming to the top. Good. Doesn't matter, Doesn't matter Good. what I'm saying. Nope. It's about them. Nope, it's about you. And it's about your glory and and you can be the star you want to be and shine and burn bright and, and burn with that passion. I think that, Carl, that you could be really great and I, I think that as long as you keep doing what you do and stick to what you say and, you know, keep coming here and getting the your batteries recharged and, you know, and just stick close to Marsha and me and, and Kareem and anybody else that you know that you respect and admire things will happen for you because you have more minds working together towards one common vision and one common goal so the power is stronger when you have a mastermind of people working together the the, the results happen even quicker for you so you know if you need to vent do, you know if you yeah it's right. family because a lot of the family is out to see you fail oops I uh, need which is yeah, well, mine I know it's... Uh, mine is, they don't, <laughs> they don't want to see me rise to the top because I'll be better than them. That's right. But I don't... Anytime care. somebody... Yeah, anytime somebody tries to stifle you, it's because they don't have what they want. So they don't want to see anybody else get it either, and that's bullshit, and nobody has to live like that. Exactly. And, and uh, I think that when we compare ourselves to other people we're actually doing ourselves a big disservice because that's you can't do that and I used to do that a lot uh, and I realized you know, what the hell am I doing I don't know anybody on this I don't know anybody on this planet anything and I'm I owe myself really I am I'm proud of you for that Chris because you know what it took me 53 years to find what you now know I didn't yeah. know that I let other people dictate everything. One wife to the next wife to the next wife. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Now it becomes no, dear. Good. No. You gotta keep them in line, man. You gotta keep them in line when they try and, and control you like that. Because that's what makes women respect oh, wow. men is is oh, the... the but it's true because if you let a woman control you, they lose respect for you and they lose attraction for you. When when they're trying to control you, they're testing your manhood. They're testing you to see if you're the strongest bear. Exactly. And you damn well better pass Just those like tests or they're out the door. Just yeah. like the dogs. If dogs can't take the union over that, over that pitch... He ain't getting it. I'm sorry, but that's my heart. He ain't getting it. We went from people to women to dogs. Yeah. Well, all right. All right. Yeah. I've seen it. Keep composure here. Sorry, oh, we're getting a lot of echo. Well, you said it was yeah. all right, but I'll mute out and let y'all take over. <laughs> uh, uh, that's what we that's needed what we to do to spice the show up. We need that type of bang, 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 bang. You know, we got to challenge it. these. <laughs> we got to challenge the established <laughs> persona and the established I ain't afraid to say it, and I ain't afraid to wear it. I'm a Boston Celtics through and through. That's good. That's a good team. Chris, At least they I made the playoffs this year. Could go I ahead, Donna. Could I just pick I up? Say, Let's do I just, it. I just want to pick up on one thing that you said there, Chris. You you said to Carl, you could be great. You could be really great. Well, I would say, Carl, you already are really great. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm just trying to make instill yeah. that in him that and, that he has to choose to believe that. That's what yeah, I meant. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. You know, we, we all are great within ourselves. We only have to realize the, in, the inherent greatness within us. You know, hey, and, Bob, you might as well know why I medicate, man. <laughs> well, well, that's fine. I mean, you know... That's my thing, man. We, we all have our um, modus operandi. 
but you know, the, I, I think the point is that what life is all about is realizing the, the, the greatness that's already within us, and um, and and you know, not letting anybody um, you know put us down or make us believe that we're anything less than what we are. You know, we yeah. are we are all. Um, we have greatness within us. We have the ultimate, you know, the universal greatness within us. We have the whole universe within us, and life is about realizing that. Yes, it one, is. One really inspiring one. Sorry, that Dada was that, and I, I actually say this to people now. I just picked it up. Like whenever you're in trouble, whenever you're in worry. You know, don't worry about it because the force that, you know, govern or the force that helps us all, you know, helps you too. Or as you said, the force that governs the stars also, you know, assists the, you too. The force that guides us all, uh, uh, the force that, uh, what was the thing? I've, I've even forgotten my, uh, the, <laughs> my guru said, <laughs> the, force that, the force that guides the stars guides us too. Yeah, right, yeah. That's yeah. profoundly powerful when you think about it, because somebody says like, "I'm not good enough. I don't have the ability. Uh, I'm whatever excuse. I'm too short, small, fat, disabled, whatever it is." You can say, "No, you have the power of the universe here," and that's not an analytical thing. If you can feel that, you can like overcome and be that. That was me when I first started. Everybody's like, "Kareem's a geek. He's on his computer." And yeah, I'll admit, I played a lot of video games. I was on my computer. I was a skinny kid with glasses and puffy hair, so I fit the stereotype. It was basically like Steve Urkel, except I was Arab. Um, but regardless of that, when they said that in eighth grade, I'm like, I'm hitting the gym. And I'm like doing, you know, 20 pound dumbbells and struggling to bench maybe 80 to 60 pounds. So, not Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I just got it in my head, regardless of how I was performing at that moment, regardless of the empirical and analytical thing, I'd just go in there in the gym and go crazy and just like... <laughs> they're looking at like, what's that crazy geeky kid doing? And I started doing P90X and Insanity, and I just keep... I'm not obviously a bodybuilder, but I just kept going at it, regardless of what the evidence said. And now I think I'm in a lot better condition. And some of the dudes who made fun of me, they're coming along with like a gut, like, hey, Kareem, how you doing, buddy? I'm like, hey. Uh. So I didn't yeah. look at the empirical evidence. I just looked at where I wanted to go, regardless of it. Didn't analyze it, and here I am, rocking a show, rocking a cool business, and a band. So, Carl, you can do anything, and you already are great. You have the universe within you. So yep. go yep. tear it up like a high school right. kegger. Oh, well, Doug, right. Doug wants to talk. Go ahead, Doug. I was just gonna. I was just gonna say. I was just like Kareem. I was the, the 90 pound weakling. And you just keep going, and eventually you get this. Yeah. <laughs> My wife loves it when I do that. <laughs> you too can have this. Yeah. Something to strive for, isn't it, guys? <laughs> yeah, ripped in the Entrepreneur Power Hour. We'll show you how to build a gun. Well, I'll do a show just for the gun show. We'll just flex. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Hey, I, I still have Derringer, so I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Here we go. Muscle. Here we go. Muscle. Muscle. No, muscle, muscle. I'm, 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 still that, I'm still that guy in the gym, gym that's a little geeky guy that's, that's over there pumping weights and saying, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all right, man. I'm going to be old and old and buff. That's what I'm going to be. You can be like Popeye the Sailor Man and I pop in some spinach and someone's like, network marketing is a scheme. And you just eat like spinach and go, you're like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Use my protein shake instead, though. Yeah. It's just like Rick Ray. It's just like Rick Ray. It's just like Rick Ray. You say, be the best. Well, you know what? In the business world, to be the best, you have to be taught by the best. Yeah. Come. 
the best. You know what I'm saying? And this allows us to let out those inner, you know, inner things that we're always scared that the world will frown upon. You know, and that's 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 what I just like about you guys. You let me say things, and I'm sorry if I cut you all off, but I'm just being my blue. <laughs> yeah. I'll mute back out. Let y'all have it. Thanks. Hey, don't worry about it. We are all beautifully and wonderfully made. It doesn't doesn't matter at all. We all have our purpose. We all have our place. Yep. Yep. Wow, now there's silence. Thoughts, Chris? What? <laughs> Any thoughts, Chris? Uh, yeah. Lots of thoughts going through my head. Um, Does it hurt? I don't understand. Does it hurt? <laughs> Does it hurt? <laughs> yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, I think... The most one of the most strongest turning points for me was when I found heavy music because for me it's really made such a positive difference in my life and really forced me it's 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 empowered me to be myself it's empowered me to challenge people it's empowered me to have a free voice and and be opinionated and unapologetic I mean perfect example my uh my, our friends were over the other night playing Magic the Gathering. It's an awesome trading card game if you've never heard of it. It's probably the most popular trading card game in the world. In fact, it is the most popular trading card game in the world. And I sold my collection to my roommate a while back, but they wanted me to start playing again, so I bought cards. And my buddy Kyle was over, and we were drinking some beers, having a good time, you know. And uh, Dennis's girlfriend came out of the kitchen and asked me if she could have some paper to draw with, right? And of course, because there was all these conversations going on between Kyle and Dennis and Dave and Alicia, and Kyle was chatting with them, and she came in, and, and I couldn't really hear her, right? And I kind of got snappy and said, I don't know where there's where any paper is. What the hell are you asking me that for, right? Because I was trying to trying to concentrate on what I was doing, and me and Kyle were in the middle of something, and he went to the washroom, and uh, she kind of got all like, well, you don't have to be like that. And so I just let it go. And then the next day I messaged her on Facebook if they were coming back over. And I said, by the way, were you asking me for paper last night? Because I had, you know, I had been drinking and I kind of was drunk. So I was like, okay, well, you know, I said, did I, uh, you asked me for paper. She goes, yeah, and you kind of snapped at me and, and made me feel bad. And I walked away from you and I said, oh, well, I'm not responsible for how you feel. You know, and I'm not. I mean, I wasn't being rude. I was just simply saying, what the hell are you asking me for paper for? Like, you have eyes, you have arms. Look around for some paper and draw on it. What, what, you know, so I have that edge to me where I just don't give a shit what anybody thinks of me. And if I offend them, too bad. Too bad, man, because at least I'm honest. At least I have the integrity and the balls to say what I think and to stand up for what, what I'm about. And I think that's the most important thing about being entrepreneurial is being willing to take those risks and accept those consequences because you can't be apologetic if you're an entrepreneur. And, and you can't cater to anybody. You, you can't. Um, but you, you don't have to be a prick either. I'm not saying be a prick, of course, because, you know, I was really guilty of being a prick for a lot of years, and I've come a long way. But I'm not going to lose what makes me Chris. I'm not going to change that for anybody. If you don't like my attitude, don't talk to me. Pretty simple. You know, so but that's just an example of what, what Dada was, was talking about, that we, we don't have to feel responsible for other people, and, and, and we, we don't. We're not responsible for how someone interprets us. That's their choice. Thanks. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. I'm never asking, asking you for paper. For paper. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I have to I was agree drinking, with you. Man. I, yeah, I wasn't even I was thinking, thinking about paper. paper. 
Uh, she got all Chris, all I'll give you the benefit thing. of the doubt on most of that. Because <laughs> um, I, I do agree, you can't, you cannot give up yourself to please other people. Okay. Now there is, a, I do believe there's a there's a line there where, at a certain point, having having a, enough consideration for others to temper certain things about yourself come is is something that I strive to do at least because I do have a lot of rough edges and I probably do grade on people the wrong way. Um, and I've had to, over the years. That's that's where people as you get older you tend to mellow. I think uh, I think that's where a lot of that comes in. Is you realize, yeah, you know, you know, maybe everything that I feel about me isn't doesn't have to be, you know, quite so strong. And when I, you know, if I want to take other people's feelings into effect at the same time or into account, so. Um, but but again, you know, you, you cannot give up who you are and your principles and stuff to to please others either. So it's all again, just like Dada has been saying all the way along, it's balance. You know, you got to balance what's right for you along with what is, you know, where the line you need to where you put other people, you know, uh, value other people as well. So. Well, I think I should give you a bit of a history. Yeah. Yeah. I think I should give you a bit of history on this person. Um, they come over and they annoy them. They annoy me. Purposely annoy me. Okay, they'll get into like these. You got to mute, mute, Doug. Okay, well, I, I, on that, I wouldn't hang out with somebody like that. Right, but they're not just my friends. They're also my roommate's friends, right? And he wants them around or wants to play magic with Dennis. But they never shut up. You know, they, they, they always have to have some witty comment to say about anything you say and just sarcasm, sarcasm, sarcasm. And that night, I really wasn't in the mood for them to come over. Because Kyle was over, and I, Kyle and I are, we have so much in common, music and drinking, sports, those types of things, and it just, I just didn't want to, her to bother me, I guess, and I kind of was like, okay, you know, just snap at her and she'll go away, and she did, so I was happy about that, but um, that, that's not to say that I don't exercise what you were talking about, Doug, because I do, I'm very considerate, and I don't want to upset people. But at the same time, if you're doing something that I don't like, I'm going to tell you. And you may not like what I say, but, you know, that's part of being a, uh, that's that's part of being strong, I think, and, and uh, being able to exercise yourself and, and exercise your point is, and and not only that, but she's a tumblerina. I mean, you could say anything to her, and it's going to set her off in a, in a in a way where she might start to cry, or she's got serious health problems um, due to her weight and stuff, and she won't do anything about it. So she feels sorry for herself all the time, and she wants everybody else to feel sorry for her. And I don't play those games. I won't buy into that crap. Um, anybody, anybody can change can anything change they want about their life. Anybody, anybody can change, change anything. anything. And Chris, I wasn't talking about you personally. I was talking in generality. No, I don't. You know, no, I don't. Just talking. To, I mean, or or that situation. I was just talking about in general, finding that balance between holding on to who you are and and what you are with power. I mean, you know, literally just holding on to it, and not letting anybody take it away from you, but still, you know, appreciate the value of others and and yes, how yes. you how you interact with them at the same time. Absolutely. That's awesome. Absolutely. But, you know, there are people out there who are so unfortunate and they don't do anything to change their situation, so they, so want, they want everybody's, everybody's pity. pity. And that's, that's, sucking that's, leeches, that's what you're talking about. That's, that's, that's my that's point. point. And that's, <laughs> that's, what, that's what Jack's <laughs> like. So it pissed me off that night, that, right? right? So uh, anyway, oh, go ahead. Any, anyway, sometimes sometimes those are the people that need the most, the most love and caring that you have to give, you know. Yeah. yeah, sometimes but not. She's not but she's not my girl. So. <laughs> Go ahead, somebody else. Okay, um, maybe get off that topic. One thing I was going to say, and not being in terms of analytical, like one of my personal heroes, aside from Steve Jobs, is Bruce Lee, and his mantra. And you can look this up on YouTube if you're interested. I think it's pretty cool. Whether you're into martial arts or not, be water, my friend. 
And think about the constitution of water. Water doesn't sit there and judge. It doesn't go, oh, I, I don't do this. Should I not say this? Is this person better or worse? It just flows. And that's how he was such a, you know, effective mortal art, martial artist. Yeah, got tongue twisted. And it's it's awesome to see what he did with Jeet Kune Do. It's probably one of the most lethal fighting styles because he minimized all his movements to engage in combat. And that's all just by not being so analytical so you can be like, wax on, wax off. You do like the karate kid and you're like, oh. And how does he do that? You just be like water, and then you can smash these bricks. You can smash wood with your hands. Because you're not thinking, oh, that piece of wood is so heavy, or that block is so big. How am I going to do it? And if you see this guy named Master Moses, he's just in the moment. Uh, you can look him up on YouTube, too. He's just like... <sighs> breaking like six bricks at once. I think Chris showed me those videos. And to me, it's all because th these people are not thinking... Uh, how am I going to break those bricks? Um, I could Google it. Uh, let me think. And Bruce Lee wasn't thinking. Uh, what What am I going to do to stop a punch? Um, hold on, guys. Uh, no, just be like water. Just what comes at you. Punch. I learned that in MMA. And then I got in a sparring match and then punched the other guy in the face and he had a nosebleed. And I'm like, I'm quitting. Uh, bad. But aside from that, the awesome part of Bruce Lee's philosophy and some of these martial arts, some of these Eastern philosophies, is just be like water, just flow. Water does not seek to judge or analyze, and maybe we shouldn't either. So, that's just my thoughts. Uh, anybody? anybody? Hey guys, I just want to say goodbye. I've got to get off of here, but I want to say hi, goodbye to everybody and thanks for all the input. Thank you. All right, we'll talk again soon. Thank you. For all right, being I'll here. see you next week. Yeah, later, all. Later. Have a great night. Go ahead, Dada. You want to chime in there? Uh, yeah, I, I also like the uh, the water analogy. I've known that analogy for, for a while now, and I've... I've uh, I probably relate to it more and more as time goes on. The more I, the more I, um, you know, evolve on my own journey, the more intuitive I become. The more I relate to that whole concept of, of water flowing. And I think it kind of, it's a nice kind of that brings us back to, what we started off talking about. The whole, you know, thing of, just letting it flow, not being too analytical, and um, just acting more from from a feeling of the heart and, and, and intuition rather than the intellect and overanalyzing stuff. Yeah. Awesome. So I can also, I close out the show? Or I also like the end. Oh. Sorry, Corrine. Go ahead, Carl. No, go ahead, Carl. I also like the analogy of water in comparison to business. If we don't have an agenda, isn't that being like water? Uh, kind of like neutral. We don't really have an agenda and we want people in our business. You know, a lot of people go out there and that's what they've got is an agenda. And most times agenda is not how you get people to sign up. You know what I'm saying, right? The wrong kind of agenda. Everybody's got to have an agenda. But I mean the wrong kind of agenda, like, like many people, they don't know how to market, so they go out and spam you. And that's all they know. <laughs> so, and sometimes they don't even want to learn any other thing. Yeah. That's the way they believe that they should do it. Like most Reds, they don't make a, you know, they don't make a relationship. They just splat their links around. Yeah. I mean, what's that going to do? That's not a relationship. So, and that's, that's where it all breaks down to. You kind of got to have like a water agenda, you know, like you don't really have an agenda, but you want to help people. And that's what you guys have here with this power hour. You want to help people to reach for that golden ring in any way you can and be open about it while you're doing it, you know? And it's yeah, just like water. You're allowed to talk about things like water. 
it doesn't matter. It's just we'll brush it off. And like me and my dog analysis, it was funny. You know, everybody cracked up, but you could have taken it in a whole lot different serious note. You know what I'm saying? But you didn't. Instead, you took it like water. Like it, that's cool, and that's what I like about you guys. You, you like that. You let someone express themselves. Yeah, that's what I like about you. <laughs> well, I'm just me. I'm just a medicating muscular dystrophy, but I'm the best there is, and the best I ever will be, because <laughs> I say so. <laughs> and that's what you got to think about. Because if you don't think that way, everybody awesome. else, will yeah, you glory. everybody else is going to steal I glory. totally agree. You're better than them. I mean, you're better. They're better than you. You're better. No. To be the best, you got to beat the best, and to be successful, you got to deal with the best. You know, people that have already been around the block and they've learned all kinds of stuff, and that's why I just gave you that open jacket. Um, if you check it out. It goes for free, K through 6, just for free training. They have all kinds of different tools and strategies and blah, blah. Just something to think about, Kareem. Um, it's, I'm not gaining anything other than helping people because that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. I don't have an agenda on it. Yeah, it's like Zig Ziglar said. You, If you help enough people, you'll get what you want. Uh, here's a funny thing about being analytical. When we first started this show, we came up with the idea of I'm going to ask five questions, and then Chris would ask people five questions, and turn out to get real goofy because people are thinking, oh, questions, and I don't know, and they're trying to be analytical. And funny enough, I'm like, let's just do free. Our, our mentor, Marcia Sortino, said, why don't we just do a free-flowing discussion, let ideas flow, just like flow, water. flow, flow. Like and water. That's a very interesting idea. Like water. Like water. If I could if I could give anybody any advice today, it would be like water. Because the water is already the best. Exactly. If you're already the best, Carl. If you're free flow if you're free flowing, the only thing the only be the best Carl you can be. Don't be anybody else. Be Carl. Um and Thank you'll be fine. You. Thank you. Is there anything anybody wants to add, or can I close it out for today? Yeah, you can. We can say goodbye for now. I think everybody have a good, sh okay, good time here today. Yeah, I did. awesome. Thank yeah. you. How about you, Dada? Did you enjoy uh, being here today? Yeah, I really did. It was great to be here. Good. Come yeah. back next I, week, man. Oh, thanks. Yeah, Thank yeah, so yeah man. Anytime. I'm actually getting invited back to something. Great. Of course you are. <laughs> yeah. The more people we have, oh, yeah, the, the bigger you know. The more people we have, the bigger the show's gonna get, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. And you have a lot of incredible like insights. Oh, I think I about it like this is kind of like a party. It's it's yeah. the more awesome minds we have, the more creative stuff and things we can come up with or someone who's just coming up. Maybe someone who doesn't even know if they want to. They can see this and be like, whoa, this is awesome. There's these people here, all different types of personalities, backgrounds, uh, ideas, and they'll get excited. Mm -hmm. So that was our show today. I'm Kareem, the host. This is my co-host and bro, Chris Peters. I want to ask Dada uh, one more we question had before you close it out. And this is Dada. Yeah, yeah, I want sure, to ask Donna a question and, and actually want him to tell his story. Um, what made you decide to become a meditation teacher and how long have you been on that journey of personal enlightenment? Uh, well, I've been on the journey for 25 years now. I, um, I first uh, learned meditation in 91, well, almost 25 years ago. Um, but it was uh, the search for a deeper meaning in life because I wasn't uh, satisfied with the, the usual kind of stuff that we've been fed with, you know, the whole thing of, you know, get a good job, get, have, a, have a family and you'll be happy for the rest of your life. That didn't cut it with me. So um, 
Yeah, so then I learned, med- I, I, you know, I was seeking for something, you know, deeper and I learned meditation and that was that, that, you know, I, no looking back I, and, um, you know, I've been doing it now for the last 25 years and I don't know where the time has gone, but it's like, um, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm an, a completely different person now. It's, uh, you know, I feel that, uh, um, you know, something really profound has happened within me um, just by, by practicing meditation for that time. Of course, wow. it's not like a, a, an instant. It's not like fast food or anything. You got to really work at it. And yeah, it's a, it's a whole. You know, it's a. If you make it part of your lifestyle and you do it your whole life, for sure, it's going to make a really profound effect in your life. So, yeah, I, agree you know, with I would, you. I would recommend it to anyone. Yeah, yeah. I'd wow. like to. I'd like to learn from you actually. Um, how to. Because sometimes I have a hard time slowing my brain down, eh? So uh, I think it'd be really interesting to, to. Uh, to do that, and we will probably. Yeah. I would love to have you teach some meditation classes on our show. I think that would be great to add to our content, and yeah. it could give yeah. you a chance to get yourself out there and uh, get some more people interested in what you do, Dada. We'd love to have you do that on you know one of our one one of our weeks. Go ahead, teach uh, a meditation class. Yeah, I'd be, that, that I'd, be ha- I'd be yes, happy. Not, I, I'd be happy to do that. I'd be happy to do that. But one thing. Um, next week, this time next week, I'm going to be on the train between Los Angeles and Kansas City. Okay. So probably, unless I find Wi-Fi on the train, I probably won't be able to make it next week. But sure, for sure, I'd be happy to to do um, you know a kind of a yeah, and and, thing and come back. We want you back, man. Um, now, Thanks. if you come back next week, we can, if you know you just tell us when you're going to be available, and we could move. It depending on who's coming, because we got a guy in Spain named Andrew Dishes who loves coming on the show and he's eight hours ahead of us so you know we try to keep it earlier for him um, now if we moved it up an hour or two do you think you could you could make it back you mean next week yes sir uh, no because I'll be on the train next oh, week. oh and you got a long trip okay cool yeah okay that's cool yeah uh, but the week after should be okay but okay. in any case um, you know we'll, okay yeah, I'll make it sometime. Yeah. Yeah, no, no pressure. It's whenever you can. I'm not in the business of like, you be, you better be here. Unless someone's like, I'm gonna come on the show, woo, yeah. and then they're well, like, I'll be here, and then two well, minutes later they're like, nope. Then I'm like, hmm. Right. That's what well, gets me. Well, as I said, if I can find a Wi-Fi connection on the train, um, okay. th- then I'll be able. To, uh, so I'll try. But okay. I, I can't. That's okay. Fine. I can't guarantee. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you for everybody uh, for being here, your insights and your open discussion. This is Chris Peters and Kareem Mays for the Entrepreneur Power Hour. We had Dada here today. He is a spiritual meditation teacher. We had Doug Doitery. He's a fellow entrepreneur in network marketing. And we had Mr. Carl Davis here today who's also a entrepreneur in network marketing. I want to thank everybody for being here. And Kareem, do you have any f- closing thoughts? No, just be like water. Uh, what? Be, you are your you are at your best already. Oh, there's Carl. So don't worry about trying to be better, quote unquote, than someone. That's an illusion. You're already the best as long as you're being you. And we will see you next week. And hopefully, Donna can ask the universe for a Wi-Fi connection, so we'll be here. Good night, everybody. Good night.